two, one. Hello, this is Prios and I'm a professional gambler. And today we look into a session Bill Perkins played at no limit 100k. And yeah, the original footage is from Bluff the Sport. Thanks for this video and let's get into it. And that's a very ugly flop. Let's see what Michael does here. Uh, let's see if he goes for something like a 4 or 5k bet, or even like a 7k bet, or something like 1500 to 2000. King 7 offsuit is a pretty loose open raise. It's actually 501k, not 501k, 2k. So it's a pretty loose open raise, but there's an ante out there, which makes you a little bit looser. So call by uh, Timothy Kuznetsov, who, who is... a. Uh, who is True Teller, arguably the best poker player in the entire world. Not at No Limit Hold'em, he doesn't play that game very often, but overall you could say he's the best uh, player in the world. Yeah, could be the case. And so he defends Ace-2 suited, which is pretty standard. And we're going to see an interesting spot here. It looks standard from both guys so far. Victor can do a couple of things. He can go for something like a very small bet, something between $1,500 and $2,000. In this game, $1,500 to $2,000 is a small bet. Or he could go for something for like a five, six, seven thousand dollars $7,000 bet. Is he talking about a donk? I would check my ace deuce and check call. I mean, that's a hand we want to pot control with. Okay, so he does go for the, uh, for the small bet. Oh, okay, he took it as granted that we check. Uh, yeah, makes sense. I mean, that's no limit hold'em. Not many donks in this game. At least that's what I know. And I don't know that much about uh, no limit hold'em. And I don't think Timothy is going to do anything else but call. He's got no kicker. He's got no backdoor flush draw. He's got no backdoor straight draw. And he calls. That's what I said too. Turn is a nine, and Victor is gonna pre be pretty happy here. He knows that True Teller can have in like King Nine or Ace Nine, but that's about it. So if he's if he's uh, good on the flop, he's most likely good on the turn. And there's a lot of bluffs he can use here. So Victor goes for an overbet, saying, "Hey, I've got a lot of strong hands here, a lot more than you do, and I'm gonna." Yeah, I mean, Victor is also a very aggressive guy who's often spewy. So. I had, would have a very uh, hard time folding top pair against him. And I guess True Teller probably calls again. I'm going to apply a lot of pressure. And I can easily balance this with a lot of bluffs. And True Teller is probably thinking, well, my deuce is not very good, but I do at least unblock a lot of his bluffs, like Jack-10, for instance. And so he does continue, which I think is probably the best play, unless he thinks that Victor is not capable of barreling aggressively. But I mean, we're playing 501k here, right? I mean, people are definitely capable of doing so. Yeah, Victor is hyper aggressive, what I saw from him. So. And Victor here definitely is going to value bet. He can get value from an ace. Um, not really from many worse two pairs, maybe 9-7. And yeah, maybe he gets called by ace nine, which is okay, right? When you value bet, you can't just bet when you have the best hand 100% of the time. You've got to take a bit of risk. And so Victor goes for a three quarters pot. Like sizing. Bet. That's kind of what this hand is worth. And Truto is thinking, well, I mean, man, so many hands miss, right? Six, five, 10, eight, jack 10, queen 10, uh, maybe like an under pair, maybe some random hand. And so he does decide to make the call. And Bill Perkins shows ace four, which would have been a winner, but I like the fact that he folded. So Bill opens 10 six suited on the button, which I think is, uh, is a good play. I mean, it's not the greatest hand, but even non anti, this hand is an open raise. And Nick Petrangelo shoot three by his hand 100%. I'm in again. <laughs> no cards covered this time. Is a small open raise like this standard even an anti game? I don't know. Sound of the time here. I like the open, by the way. Wow, what okay. the, this was a really huge three bet. I mean, folding is not a shame in my eyes. For such a huge race with such a junky hand and against a guy who has only 100 big blinds. This is 84K, by the way, which his opponent has. So he goes for a pretty large three bet to 15 big blinds. And we see a pretty loose call by, uh, by 10. Okay. Um, I still, I'm still good in <laughs> no limit. 
So that's what he's going to say, that he should have pulled it. Six suited, but not a big deal. So Ace-A-6 is a very good board for Nick. He's going to be sealing this board very aggressively and very small. So I'm expecting a bet which is about like seven, eight, nine thousand. Wow. Can predict the future. Seven, eight, nine thousand. Okay, correct. Wow, what the fuck is Bill doing? I think he's supposed to just call. Bill goes for the raise here, which is a little bit unorthodox. Uh, it's not a board on which you usually should be doing a lot of raising because, I mean, you just don't have very much, right? You're going to have sixes here, maybe a six, maybe and like eight. Maybe this is like raise for information or some stupid shit some people do. Uh, he wants to see if his hand is good and end the end, hand right here. If his opponent has like whatever, 10 jack. He's queen, but you're not going to have aces. Right, you're not gonna have as many ace kings, so it's also bad for his range because his opponent has the way better hands as, however, the guy is, is uh, MMA Shadow, I think is his, uh, his name. Um, what the guy is him saying, but yeah, it's, it's very, very, um, yeah, experimental, let's say, to to race here against a way stronger range, your opponent. A bit of orthodox here. And he gets called by Nick. Nick's thinking, well, I block ace jack and I beat some kind of weird overplayed hand and I beat all of his bluffs, obviously. And let's see what Bill does here. If he's in the mood to. Yeah, that's very interesting what he's doing now. He probably would check back, but. Not Gamble, he home. will shove, but. Hold him, hold him, pro. If he shoves, he's going to get a fold by Nick almost for sure. But the thing is, Nick could easily just have called him with an ace, right? And he would not be... Uh, okay, Bill. Chickens out. <laughs> he would not be getting a fold. We now seeing a check down? Probably. I mean, it's also very, very risky if Bill now pulls the bluff. So, yeah, I think it's probably getting checked down. And so Nick's thinking now, well, can I turn my hand into a bluff here? But what am I making him fold? Am I making him fold a queen here? Am I making him fold a king? He shouldn't have either one of those hands very often. Let me just check and hope Bill had a hand like, you know, 6-7 suited, 10-6 or whatever, 10-9 suited. I imagine Bill checks behind. And Nick must be pretty happy to win this. Bill also plays very, very loose. 80 VPIP. Although Viktor Malinowski does the same. Probably just a few hands in the session. I think he's not that reckless. This hand, this could have easily gone wrong. When you call the flop, this is about the best thing that can happen. Jack 10 suited is 100% open raise, and jacks are going to be 3 bet, and Jack 10 suited will be called. Eventually, the tournament players. Oh, that's not this, not a massive 3 bet to 50k this time. 15k, I mean, just 12. Uh, I mean, Jack 10 is such a beautiful hand, but he's hard dominated, but he does not know that. He's always like to uh, take uh, take their time. Easy call. I don't think this hand is going to be four bed very often. I don't think this hand is ever going to be folded. Just got a call. And Michael's in, a, in an interesting spot. It's a spot in which you can use many different plays, small bed, medium. You can use a big bed and try and shove the turn, right? Even check raising would be a cool play. Jax is a very good hand here, but there's a lot of ugly runouts for you. I mean, any ace, any king, any queen, a nine is kind of ugly, an eight's kind of ugly, a six, even a seven is not the best. And so he goes for the big bet. Yeah, so you might chop the turn. And Nick's thinking, well, I've got two overcards and a, and a straight draw. But then again, I'm going to get shoved on quite a bit. Turns the queen, which is better for Michael. Not for his exact hand, obviously. He doesn't like this card. Um, Nick, you know, which queen does he call? Does He calls and like ace-queen suited on the flop sometimes, but he's not going to hit this queen a ton, right? Maybe he floats in like queen-jack sometimes. Wow. Going after it. And so uh, Nick does decide to go for the bluff, thinking, well, Michael's going to have a lot of hands like nines, tens, and jacks. I can pressure those. If he were bluffing, a hand like king-10 suited on the flop, I can just... Yeah, I think he definitely also has to call turn. 
Not sure if we can get away on river with less than half bot left. And his opponent and and so many draws bricked. Four five six five six. Jack ten, jack nine, nine ten. Then he might also have picked up a diamond drawn turn. So yeah, I think he probably should not fold, but not an expert, <laughs> as I've already said. Just make him fold. <coughs> And on the river, let's see what Nick does. I think he's going to bluff shove this one all in. It's not the worst hand to be bluffing with. And he does shove, and he's trying to get Michael off hand like queen 10, queen jack, jacks, 10s. Maybe hand like 8-9 suited. Maybe some type of stubborn ace-king that couldn't fold the turn. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And so I think Michael probably, in theory, has to call this one. I think he beats. That's what I said. Wow. GTO Wizard, although never looked into any sim. <laughs> we know him, don't know him, know him. Enough hands that uh, this one does become a call. His blockers are not fantastic, though. And his hand is like, you know, it's decent. So, you know, if he thinks Nick is a big nit, he might be able to let this go. If he thinks Nick is a very capable guy, you know, who can bluff enough, I think he should call this hand. Nice hand. Yeah, so I mean, it looks like Nick just dumped off $100,000, but I think his play was good. I don't think there's a whole lot he could have done. He could have maybe waited until the river to bluff and saved himself some money, but you can't just do that every time, right? Jack-10 is uh, is not the greatest hand, but it's an easy open raise, and I like a defend with Queen-7 suited. Mm -hmm. And pretty good flop for Luke. I mean, top pair with a good kicker. He also blocks pocket queens. And so Gas Trader checks behind. You could have bluffed a hand like this, you know, two over cards and a straight draw, very little show it on value. Oh, it's tough one. Should Lucas now bad turn or try to induce a bluff? I mean, I guess both, both is fine checking and betting. But it's fine. Wow. And Lucas ends up betting thinly on the turn. Well, he makes a thin looking bet, but his hand is definitely worth more, right? If we go back here. I mean, there's 6,700 in the pot. Luke's hand is worth easily full pot, but he decides to go small here. And gas. Yeah, maybe he was tr trying to induce. Straight ends up floating in with the Jack 10, which is kind of loose. Yeah, Jack 10 call is very, very. <laughs> yeah. What else? What should I say? Uh, but he, he gets there. Mm. The question is should Lucas bet again? Or should he. Try to imbue. What what is he putting his opponent on? I mean, it seems like he's just floating with random trash, and he can also have a five somehow a deuce, but a deuce has trips on the turn, so that's not that helpful. Like gut shots, though gut shots also bet the flop at least sometimes. Arts almost definitely bet. I would guess so. He will be trying to extract from verse 7 or verse 5. Maybe ace king, ace queen high. Some sort of ace that does not have a beat. Yeah, I think it's thin. Uh, either way. But it's not loose, uh, loose if you hit. And so Luke is thinking, well, does, does, does Gastray have an overpair very often? Probably not. Does he have a deuce very often? Probably not. Does he have a jack? I mean, it's possible, but I think he will go ahead and bet. And I do, so I do like Luke's bet here. You could have even gone a bit bigger. And Gastrader now snap min raises him, basically. I like the race, but I think he could have made it a bit bigger and his timing. Seems a bit suspicious because it's that fast and if he would be bluffing he probably would not click it instantaneous but yeah i don't know it's just my experience with these type of dudes min raise plus like 500 dollars. so i mean this is ugly right you have to put in like 3500 more um you have to put in like 3500 more well like 4000 more to win a pot of 25k so is Gas Trader just randomly doing this with King Queen enough of the time to make this call? And I can't blame Luke for calling here.
Yeah, I think also with a call is okay. Yeah, Australia wins a nice pot. Getting this prize. Ace Queen, easy open race from any position, even on even under gun in full ring. And Queen Eight is a pretty loose call, but remember there's a lot of antis in there. So it gives Yeah, the people are also assuming that uh Bill is the mark of the table and they want to get hands in against him, so makes sense to defend the Queen Eight. You a better price. Gastro checks behind with Ace Queen here, which is very interesting. Um, I would recommend that he just bets his hand. Very tricky one. And now, probably a ton of money is going in. I mean, his hand is really, really good, right? He's got top air, top kicker. He's got the the nut flush, the back row nut flush draw. I would definitely go ahead and bet this one. And when Michael sees this turn, I mean, he must be super happy, right? He's thinking, well, Gastrio checks behind, so it's unlikely as a queen. Maybe he has one, but with another queen rolling off, there's only one left. How can I be beat? So I assume that uh, Michael is going to want to make this pot. I think Michael now thinks that he will extract a lot of value. <laughs> Quite large. Eventually, of course, because he's a tournament player. So he goes for an overbet on the turn, saying, hey, I've got more trips than you, buddy. I'm going to be punishing you. Uh, I don't really like the re-raise. Because this looks strong. And also with the history from the hand before, where he did basically the same thing. And yeah, I mean, I can't imagine. I mean, I can imagine what he could do it with a flush draw, but I think not that often, especially not against an overbet. So, yeah, I think calling is probably the better play because he will force out a lot of stuff this way. And yeah, if he's up against another queen, this will work out, but he is not always up against a queen. So, yeah, not sure. Let's see what um, Sherlock, the real Nordman Holden specialist, thinks about this re race. And so when he gets raised now, he's like, what What the hell, right? He just min-raised against Lucas. He made a crazy play earlier with the 10-6. With the what is this guy up to, right? What, what is this guy up to? So Michael's never, ever going to fold. I do think he'll just call. Does Gastrader check behind sevens or deuces here? Does he really check behind a, a better queen? So I do think... Definitely just call. I don't want to shove in the money. If he's bluffing, he should be continuing his bluff. And if you re raise, you force out the bluffs. I think Michael should be calling here. Keep Gastrader's bluffs in there, in there. If he is behind. Although, also, not sure how many bluffs Gastrader has this situation. Behind against the trap, he's going to be quite far behind. At, le at least that one might save Michael some money. You know, maybe Gastrader checks behind. I don't think he's going to be betting huge here. It would be interesting if Michael goes for a very small lead. It would probably work if he bets 15k on the on the turn on the river. He probably just gets a call, whereas if he, yeah, whereas if he checks, Perkins might bet. Oh, not sure about this play. I mean, he's he's trying to pot control with this like block betting type of, and but it's sort of transparent. He wants to get a showdown with something that isn't too strong. But for Bill, there's also not that much incentive to raise. I think he probably just calls, but let's see. 35k. So I'll be pretty surprised if Perkins does anything but call. Mm -hmm. Perkins calls. And yeah. he's definitely upswinging. Nice run so far. This looks to be an open raise under the gun and a call on the big blind, big blind by Luke Reeves. I don't really see why you would three bet king three suit it. I mean, having a king high flush draw is nice. Having king high is nice, but you've got a three kicker and your hand is not connected. And Ooh, an action flop. An action board. That's a very ugly flop. Let's see what Michael does here. Uh, let's see if he goes for something like a four or five K bet or even like a seven K bet or something like 1500 to 2000. So he basically says, Michael might do anything. <laughs> I can see both plays having a lot of merit. And Michael does bet about two-thirds of the pot. 
And Luke's, I mean, he's kind of in a shitty spot, right? Because yes, he's very happy. He knows he has a lot of EV in this hand. Well, on paper, at least, not in reality. Uh, but, you know, once he check raises and gets it in, I mean, this is going to happen, right? Michael is likely going to be betting. That's not a good uh, card for the King 3. But I think he has to continue calling. But a lot of things beat him. Queen 10 got there. Ace Jack, Ace King now beat him. Here, maybe he traps and, you know, checks behind and pot controls a little bit because he's maybe afraid of Ace 3, Ace Jack, Queen 10. And Michael does. No, he's not afraid. I also think that King Jack should bet. Let's go for another two thirds pot bet. And I don't see any way that Luke does not just uh, keep on. Mm. Reversed, interesting. He'll probably go check, check. Calling, he might beat a hand like, you know, ace queen or ace 10 for value, and he beats all of Michael's bluffs. And if you fold two pair, you're quite exploitable. And Luke must be very happy to see that river. Very yeah. happy. This was a very so 5 6 suit is going to be an open raise, and let's see what Victor does. He could end up three betting or calling. I predict call. I predict free bets. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Okay. I think he's not free betting. Playing as aggressive as he normally does because Gus Trader should come along and that's why he gives him some rope. But it's not working out here. Trutel was getting a great price, but his hand was so bad he couldn't call. Ace Queen Deuce is a very good board for Michael's range, but it's a terrible one for his hand. I mean, he's got no pair, no draw. No backdoor flush draw. He's got a backdoor gut shot, I guess. I, at least it's a gut shot to the nuts. And Victor's not going to be stabbing this board very often. I mean, it's not a very good board for him. Let's see if Michael does something here. Some type of thin valley bet. I think he should check. Or maybe turn his five into a bluff. I do think he's going to end up betting. Wrong about this one. Finally, I'm wrong. And now Victor's thinking, well, I've got a flush draw, I've got an overcard. Should I take this one away? If I bet, I can get Michael a full hand like pocket sevens or hand like a, a better king high. I wouldn't hate if uh, Victor is betting here. I can maybe get him to fold a queen or at least fold it by the river. So let's see what Michael does here. I think, I think all three options actually make sense. You could end up check raise bluffing here, turning your hand into a bluff, trying to represent the nuts. I think I could see a call happening. Mm, I don't know. Check raise bluffing. Doesn't sound too good, but uh, at least he has the range advantage. He could be trapping against a very aggressive opponent. And he has way more ace queens, queens, aces, and stuff than Victor does. So, yeah, I see the merits, but he could just pick a random hand with no pair. So, yeah, okay. I, I see the merits, but yeah, check calling is also fine, I say. Unblocking Victor's draws. I could see a fold happening, thinking, well, I don't think Victor's bluffing enough and my hand is kind of kind of shitty. Yeah, I think folding isn't that bad, actually, because, yeah, Victor is very aggressive and you often will face another river bet and you have third pair and things are getting worse on the river. I predict... Okay, check race. Let's see. Okay, wrong again. The call. And now tough one. Oof. I mean, he's uh, has, uh, the bottom of his range. Oof. Oh, should Victor bluff here? What is he getting his opponent off? I mean, the flush draw he beats sometimes. An ace is certainly not folding. A queen might be folding. But what queen does not... I mean, queen 10 isn't that strong. King queen is also... Although king queen might do the crying call. I'm not sure what Victor is supposed to do here. I don't hate whatever he does. It's not folding and going for the free showdown. <laughs> for Richter because on the one hand he's got king high he's got hearts in his hand but on the other hand it's pretty difficult to have nothing here right some of his king 10 bluffs get there he can easily have hand like pocket fives or ace five here or ace jack 
So he's got a decent amount of value hands, but he thought, well, this hand is so bad at bluff, I don't need to go for it. But Whoa. right away he gets aces. Easy call by Michael. Maybe you can 3-bet at a low frequency. Nah, call it. Mm-hmm. Uh, the deuce is definitely better for Michael's range than Victor's, but it's not like Michael's calling an insane amount of deuces here. And Victor's he likely bets. just going to bet small. Yeah, makes, makes a lot sense. of sense. Michael's going to call with a And Michael's thinking, well, I've got Boom. two over cards, back to a straight draw. What should I do, right? I think all options make a lot of sense here. I actually don't mind this play. It's quite aggressive, but I don't mind it. And maybe... Kind of transparent. But yeah, I also don't hate it. Uh, will he continue with the gut shot? Maybe now Michael's saying, well, I block 6-4, I block ace-4, I've got an overcard. Well, two overcards, so that may be live. Maybe he turns his hand into a bluff, let's see. Would be a pretty aggressive but cool play. Got the double straight blockers, PLO style. Except it's uh, this one is paired. Wow. Michael goes really for an overbet on the turn. Um, and I... I think Victor's going to call. You know, so he's saying he's got at least a deuce here. If Michael check raises and like five, six of spades on the flop, he would just be checking the turn, right? Or maybe he'd be block betting for value, but he wouldn't be over betting. So he's repping a very strong hand. Victor's definitely going to call here. Makes sense. And now this river, I mean, Michael cannot rep a whole lot of hands, right? Because, I mean, okay. He Can he rep a five? Not many fives bet the turn and check rise the flop. Very interesting one. He can rep a deuce. A deuce is worth a value bet, but he's not repping a five anymore. He's not, I mean, it's going to be difficult to represent a straight. Or maybe M Michael thinks, hey, you know, if I bet something like 45,000 here, I can still end up, uh, I can still end up betting with a straight, right? Victor could be calling me with an over pair, even something like ace high. Victor's just praying Michael checks. Wow, this is a very, very, very sick spot for aces. I mean, he's in the big blind. He has way more deuces and fives than Malinowski got. Although fives don't necessarily play this way. Oof. This is... Very, very tough for Aces, and I would have no clue what to do, honestly, in the in his spot. And Michael actually goes for the shove here, which is a pretty crazy play. Uh, as I said, it's kind of hard to rep something, right? It's kind of hard to rep. But it's also kind of hard to call. Obviously an awful spot for Victor. He's thinking, what is this guy bluffing with, right? Is he turning in like 4-3 into a bluff, a flush draw? Does he just have random two overcards? Does he have some type of straight blockers? And Victor ends up making the call here, which I definitely agree with. And ends up taking down a huge 280,000. Always easy to say that you agree with it when you can see the whole cards, but I think this is a very tough one. Another pot. Nice hand. King five suited is an, uh, is an okay hand. Definitely an open raise. Even non-anti, this is an open raise. And so this is going to be an interesting board, right? Both guys are going to mix it up quite a bit on a board like this. Okay. Both Let's see what Michael does. Something. I mean, he's got an overcard and an open ender, right? But he really doesn't want to get check raised. It would be kind of annoying to have to call here. Whoa. Truth has got a straight. And this is a board in which he's going to have far more straights than his opponent, far more deuces, far more sevens. And so he's going to value bet this card very liberally. And versus such a versus such a small bet, there's no way you can fold with your five. Let's see if Michael can find a bluff raise on this river. True Teller is going to bet almost for sure. And I think he can also find a hero call, maybe. Let's see what Michael does. Again, I think all three plays make sense. Just like about 20 minutes ago. Calling might make sense if you think your opponent is bluffing enough. Bluff raising may make sense, blocking pocket fives, and folding may make sense if you think your opponent just isn't bluffing enough or you want to, to want to call with this exact hand. Yeah, I mean, bluffing is looking sort of attractive, but he's also not rapping that much. I mean, how many threes does he have in his range? He has or maybe the pocket pairs. 
It's it's, it's hard to have it here, I think, in Michael's spot. Well, so Michael does call. As I said, hero call and he's getting bad news. Call putting two teller on a lot of hands, like you know nine eight, for instance. Yeah, nice video, very interesting. Although not that many hands with Bill Perkins, although the that um, video, um, what is it called? The headline of the videos was promising Bill Perkins goes nuts at 100k and L and we almost saw no, saw no hands of him and he was also not that crazy. But yeah, I guess you have to be a bit clickbaity <laughs> to, to get as many views as possible. But yeah, yeah, I, I liked it. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching, like, subscribe, all this nice stuff. Also, consider to check out my other channel. It's about investing, cryptocurrency and stuff. Yeah, thanks again. Bye, until next time.